All right, so now I'm going to talk about the gold foil experiment that was performed by a man named Ernest Rutherford in the early 1900s. And ultimately, what this experiment determined was the structure of an atom. So right around this time, the electron had already been discovered by J.J. Thompson, and it was known that the electrons were negatively charged particles. So the question on everybody's mind then was, well, since atoms are neutral, there must be a positive charge that neutralizes this negative charge. So how do the positive and negative charges fit together within an atom? So interestingly enough, Ernest Rutherford actually worked underneath J.J. Thompson, and he accepted J.J. Thompson's model of the atom, which was called the Plum Pudding Model. So in the Plum Pudding Model, what you have is these negatively charged electrons, that's what these little red dots are, and then these negatively charged electrons are suspended in a sphere of positive charge. So, like I said, Ernest Rutherford subscribed to J.J. Thompson's model of the atom, which was the Plum Pudding model. So, he attempted to build an apparatus and run an experiment that confirmed the Plum Pudding model of the atom. And what eventually resulted was he actually ended up disproving it. So he, he hypothesized that this was the correct model of the atom, but he ended up refuting his hypothesis. So here's the basic apparatus of the experiment that Ernest Rutherford conducted. So this cube looking thing here, this is, this is a light source and this ring looking thing here, that's a detector. So I've attempted to draw it in 3D. So what this, what this thing is really supposed to be is like, imagine this bracelet here. If I look at the bracelet like this, so imagine that the red shaded portion is the inside of the bracelet and the blue shaded portion is the outside of the bracelet. And there's like a small cut in this bracelet. And then of course, this yellow looking thing is my gold foil. Now, what this source does is it pumps out what we call alpha particles. So alpha particles, which are these relatively heavy, um, positively charged po particles. Uh, they're also written as alpha 2 plus because they carry a positive 2 plus charge. And later, actually, it would be revealed that an alpha particle is actually a helium nucleus. So it can also be written as a helium nucleus, nucleus that has two extra neutrons. So a total mass of four and two protons and an overall charge of positive two. But that's not really important. All you need to know right now is that these alpha particles are positively charged. So the source shoots these alpha particles at the foil and the detector collects the signal as the alpha particles reach it. So basically uh, in an attempt to confirm the plum pudding model Rutherford performed this experiment and he hypothesized that if the plum pudding model was indeed the correct model of an atom, then these alpha particles should pass straight through the atom or straight through the foil with minimum deflection. But what what his results really were were that well most of the alpha particles did pass through but some of them were actually deflected off into other parts of the detector. And some of them even bounced backwards. So based on this, Rutherford concluded that there, there must be some localized region that contains nearly all of the mass and all of the positive charge and today that is what we call a nucleus. So this 
up here is ideally what Rutherford was expecting to happen, but what really happened was something that looks more like this. Again, most of the alpha particles pass straight through. However, some of them get, detect get deflected, and some of them even bounce back. And in order, like I said, in order to account for this observation, Rutherford concluded that there must be some small portion by volume that contains nearly all of the mass and all of the positive charge. So based on these results, Rutherford was able to develop his nuclear theory. And Rutherford's nuclear theory states the following three things. First, most of an atom's mass and all of its positive charge are localized in a small core. That small core is what we call the nucleus. So this little thing here is what we call the nucleus. Secondly, most of an atom's volume is empty space in which tiny negatively charged electrons are dispersed. So this cloud, this is supposed to be like a cloud of electron density. It's mostly empty space and there's tiny, tiny electrons that are dispersed among this empty space. And finally, since an atom is electrically neutral, there are as many positively charged particles, which we now call protons, within the nucleus as there are negatively charged electrons outside the nucleus. And that's how, that goes back to our question before, which explains how positively charged and negatively charged particles um, neutralize each other. Now, th there's one more thing that Rutherford's nuclear theory uh, sort of left out. New Rutherford's nuclear theory was spot on, but it was it was sort of incomplete. And the reason why it was incomplete, well, let me give myself a little room. Let's compare, let's say hydrogen and helium. So we have hydrogen versus helium. Hydrogen, as we know, has one proton, and helium, as we know, has two protons. Yet the mass of helium is about four times that of hydrogen. So there must be this extra mass within the nucleus that, that isn't positively charged. And that is where the neutron comes into play. And a scientist, I think his name is uh, Chadwick, James Chadwick, discovered that there are neutrons within the nucleus that are just neutral particles that have the same, uh, roughly the same mass as a proton, but they do not neutralize any of the negatively charged electrons. So that's it. That's, in a nutshell, Rutherford's gold foil experiment.